Tonight, once again on Ballot 2023, we take a look at the presidential election as Peter Obi, others file petitions to nullify Bola Ahmed Tinubu's victory. This is Ballot 2023. My name is Nyamgu Agaju. The Labour Party LP and its candidate Peter Obi have formally filed a petition at the Election Petition Tribunal in Abuja challenging the declaration of Bola Tinubu of the All Progressives Congress APC as the winner of the February 25, 2023 presidential election. The petitioners are praying for the tribunal to declare that Tinubu was not duly elected by a majority of the lawful votes cast at the election. They want an order mandating INEC to retrieve the certificate of return issued to the APC candidate and issue a fresh one to OB. Joining us live to discuss this is Tunji Abdul Hamid, a legal practitioner, and will be joined a little bit later on by Charles Otu, a political analyst. Tunji, welcome to the program. Thank you for having me. Good evening. Good. Um, <laughs> okay. Uh, we've seen what is happening in the political space and what the agitations have been like. Uh, let's take your, your, what you feel about what is going on now, the legal proceedings that have kicked off formally by the Labour Party and even by extension by the PDP. I, I think it's a normal thing allowed by law when you are not with the result of our election, you have the right to file petition before the court. And that is what I think that's what they are doing now. So the filing of petition is part of the electionary process. In other words, when you're not satisfied, you have, you have the right to go to court. And I think, uh, apart from the Labour Party, I'm, I'm sure all parties will have filed their processes today or tomorrow. Because I think today is the last day, but if my calculation is right. Because you must file within 21 days within from the date of the release of the results. So I, I think, as far as I'm concerned, there is not there's nothing new in it. It's normal. And I, 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 it's, it's expected that this, so many cases will be in court in terms of the, uh, regarding this election because there are, there are so many areas that, 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 that are not too clear and the, the way and manner the election was handled or the credibility of the election. So I don't, I, it's, not, it's not surprising to me that people are in court to challenge it. Okay, first of all, let me, let me congratulate you on a gallant fight in your state, even though you lost. Um, these litigations that uh, people are engaging in, are you also doing it in your state or you're satisfied with what happened in Kwara State? Probably it may happen because if we go by except uh, we would just want peace to, to, to lie. I, I, I'm telling you the, the last election, the, 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 the Senate and the Rep, they are, they are already in court because uh, they, are, they are all marred with uh, incredible uh, uh, parts. In other words, there is no credibility regarding uh, the election. There are no free, 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 uh, free and fair election. In fact, particularly the last governorship election, it's about manipulation, it's about money, it's about intimidation, it's about threats. Imagine where you, the, the traditional ruler became an official agent of a party because they've been threatening that if they, they are lose their area, they are going to be removed. So that, that, that's what we see there. So the law of manipulation, a law, a law of intimidation, a law of threats, a law of I don't, I don't, I don't even know the adjective to qualify it again. But as far as I'm concerned, is you know what? It's, it, the election is not about who wins the election. It's about the process. If the process is free and fair, nobody will say. I, uh, you can see, you know, you say probably because the the, the APC candidate uh, believed that it was free and fair, and he, he, he was beating fair and square. He has to the other party, and uh, the, the the winning candidate in that state. So if you have a free and fair election, and people see it to be free, you know, when we say free and fair election, it's not about what they. The, 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 the commission or those in charge says it's because they say it's fair. What fairness must be seen, not only to be you know, when you say justice, it's not only to be done, it must have been seen to have been done. So, if we don't see the fairness, if we don't see the justice, there's no way you won't be. You won't be agreed. So, I didn't expect anything less uh, by, by, uh, 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 in this matter. So many people will be in court, and I, I think this will be the, the highest election where people will be, will be challenged in court. In court. But your party at the national level seems to be um, a little bit quiet. Um, the other day we heard that uh, um, 
the petition that was before the, the court about inspection of materials has been removed, even though the explanation was given that it is because INEC has already given unfettered access to the materials that need to be, uh, to be looked into. But we don't seem to see the kind of energy uh, with which this uh, process was started immediately after the election. Is there anything that we need to know uh, you are, from you, the PDP? You are, you are in the Ori. They must fight. They are going to fight. You are in the Ori. Election Election petition is not filed in the open. It's been done inside the rooms. They are preparing the documents and they are cooking. It's not something you just rush and rush and rush and just put before the court. And like I just said, like I said earlier, I'm very sure they must have filed by now. Or, or to, I think it's, if my calculation is correct, probably tomorrow will be the last day or today. I, I'm not too sure. So definitely, they, 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 they might have filed. Maybe it's not in the public domain. So uh, as far as I'm concerned, the the, the issue of uh, my party being silent is not is not correct. They are working on that need. It's a petition, a filing of petition is not done in the public, it's not done on the, on the pages of newspaper. And so and people are working, they are doing their best to ensure that look, things are done the way it should be done. And then that no nothing is left on it or untouched. You see, regarding the application that was withdrawn, it's normal. When I when I'm asking for a particular position and that position has been taken, do I have to pursue it again? No. They are asking that they want to be part of the, the, the configuration. They want to witness it. And before that application is had before the court. It's already been done. So the right thing is to withdraw the application from the court, which is what they did. And uh, people are mistaken to, be, to say the PD, PDP has withdrawn their, their petition against the election. No, they have not even filed subject of the withdrawing it. Okay. Um, <clears throat> some people have felt that uh, this, what, this, what the Labour Party is asking for, to nullify uh, the election or to withdraw the certificate of return from the president-elect right now is a, a, a really tall order. And they're saying that uh, it, it's a, an effort in futility. As a legal practitioner yourself, do you think cases like these, if they have some merit, can overturn what has been done right now, that we have a president-elect already? Yes, if, they have, if, if it has some merit, and we have judiciary that can stand on its own, definitely... It, 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 it stand, it, they can overturn it. So there's nothing, there's nothing new in overturning a decision of the court uh, of, a, of the electoral body. So if, if you have, if a case is presented before the court and the court and that, that case is is uh, has merit before the court and they're able to prove it and they're able to establish, they, 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 they can be up, up, up mm -hmm. And that's what they're asking for. So they're asking for, you know, when you are challenging election petition, uh, 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 what's it called? Election results or, or, uh, or election of a particular candidate. What you'll be asking for is either to for a rerun or for you to be declared or for them to cancel it. So it's not out of uh, any, any, any other. It's, it's not my thing to ask for. So, but if the matter has merit and we have people or judiciary that will stand on his own, that will stand on the merit of a case, that will not be biased, then there's, there's, not, there's nothing impossible in it. So the problem for those who are saying it's a tall order, they'll be thinking or looking at not having confidence that the judiciary will be able to stand and say, election of a presidential candidate, uh, a presidential elect will be, will is, is overturned in this country. Maybe probably that's why they're worried. But it, we, we, it should not be a cause for, to, to worry because judiciary is there, the, the court is there to do justice. And justice is not about whether somebody is the president or is not the president. You must, you must do it irrespective of who the person is involved, that, 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 that is involved. So as far as I'm concerned, I believe that the case, if, it, if the court believes that it has merits or is satisfied, that has made in the case, then they, 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 it, 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 it will give the right uh, decision, which, uh, which among other, uh, is exactly what the, court, what, what the party is asking for. If they're asking for cancellation and if they deserve it, the court will give them. If they're asking for rerun, if they deserve it, the court will give them. If they're asking for disqualification of the candidate, if they deserve it, the court will, will, will grant them. So, and, uh, and for, you, for me, I know this election, particularly the presidential election, there is a lot of issue in it, that legal issue. That, that that can be challenged. You know, the matter is already in court, so I don't want to be talking about the, the merit of the case. I know the issue of uh, uh, whether Abuja or not is a part of the or, or, of the of, of the state is, is there. It's a, it's a, it's a good grant. It's a, it's a good grant to, to determine whether or not a candidate who did not win Abuja can be declared winner of an election. That's, that 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 would be one of the one of the issues that will determine that whether or not non transmission non compliance with the uh, uh, I need regulation regarding transmission of uh, results. Whether that 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 is not an irregularity that can that can that can that can, can, can be challenged. 
it's also there. So if you have if you have irregularity, if you have if the breaches of uh, electoral act or constitution or whatever are there, you can you can go to court and, and from from I've not seen the uh, petition filed by the Liberal Party and OB, but I've heard that uh, one of the issues raised in that petition it has to do with also the the criminal uh, allegation of criminal uh, uh, of crime against uh, uh, the president elect. So if that is also proven and the court is accept it, it's, it's a grant to, to, to nullify the election. So as far as I'm concerned. They've not done anything untoward. It's normal thing, and, it's, and I, I, don't, I don't expect the court to do otherwise. Where the court believe that the party before the, before it has presented a, a very good case and it's deserves to, to get uh, what it's asking for. Okay, we'll come back to interrogate uh, the uh, credibility of the courts and what the the role of the people uh, in all this. Uh, but now we're being joined by uh, Charles Otu, who is a political analyst as well. Charles, welcome to the program. Charles, can you hear me? Yeah, you. Okay, good. Good evening. Uh, good evening and welcome to Ballot 2023. Um, Thank you, Wangu. How are you? I'm fine. Okay, right okay. now, <laughs> yeah, we've seen we've seen where where the trajectory is headed. We've we've seen where where all this is headed. We're, the litigations in the courts. We we've seen what the <laughs> Labour Party is asking for right now: nullification of the uh, election, or to declare the candidate of the Labour Party the winner, or at least to remove uh, the president elect because he did not win legally all the votes that uh, they are claiming that he. He won. Um, I, I'd just like to know how you feel about how this uh, drama is playing out. Uh, thank you, Mr. Wangul. Uh, uh, thank you to my co-guest there. Uh, I listened to him in, in part. Uh, the, the fact remains that the what is before the election petition tribunal, presidential election petition tribunal, is a test, a moral test on every facet of Nigeria. First of all, from beginning from my neck to the judiciary, particularly the apex court in the land. Why do I say it's a test? Um, if you look at the five prayers made by Peter Obi, which uh, time may not permit me to read all of them, but you, you've summed it, uh, asking for a declaration that since the person declared did not meet up with the 25% requirement across the 25 states, including the FCT, that uh, he shouldn't be declared the winner of the election, and the election should be voided and himself declared winner. Uh, these are not unexpected. Why it is sounding the way it sounds, or why people are afraid, is because of the nature of the judiciary we have. Uh, the same judiciary, like um, a little friend was telling me a few days ago, he is doing a petition tribunal, a, a, a petition election, an election petition tribunal, madam. He said, look, that what you are going to see in the court in the coming days will be interesting. Why? Because people have said, do all manner of things, throw in the mud, throw in everything, and they tell you, go to court. If, if you, hello, can you hear me? Yes, go ahead, we can hear you. Okay, so if you are now before the court as majority of um, the candidates in the election are, it uh, goes without saying that um, the court should be able to look at the matters before it and do justice. When I say justice, the court should be bold and ferocious enough to say, look, We've looked at the prayers before us and the actual things we can do, we can grant, as it were. Why? Because it has happened in uh, our neighboring African country here, uh, in Kenya, we saw what played out. The court stood its ground and they said, look, we cannot uh, use the influence of the outgoing president to void an election because it didn't. Uh, you know, because of uh, influence. So we expect that the court should be able to take, because if, if uh, like they have always said, literally they say, if you, if somebody steals your goat and says, you should go to court, just know that his father is the presiding judge in the court. So the ball is now on the court of the apex court in the land to prove that it can look 
at the contents of the various contents of the electoral act because mr wangu before now what we normally hear will, will be I've, I've witnessed and covered election petitions tribunals as a journalist and a reporter in 2011 in 2015 even in 2019 what we will normally hear before the signing of the electoral act is that the card reader is not contained in the electoral act that 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 was the that was the sing song of the judiciary. That's why, on that on that technical grounds, many election petition tribunals will say, "Oh, you cannot uh, inspect, you can nothing can count because even if you bring in the issue of the card reader, it is not stated in the electoral act." Now, the essence of the electoral act amendment will be a shame and a sham and the wastage of state resources, a wastage of our national resources and funds including the time of the 365 members of the Federal House of Representatives and 109 senators who sat down, sought for amendments, and brought this law to bear before the president put his assent. So now it has become a law. We are no longer talking about the validity or otherwise of the Electoral Act. It is now contained that these are the procedures. So all that I needed to do to avoid this chaos we are plunge into, even across the 30 states where election held now, is to follow its own rules, to follow its own guidelines. So in a scenario where the electoral umpire is unable to follow through its own specified guidelines for electing and declaring somebody a winner in an election, I mean, the court becomes the last hope of the common man. And that is where Peter Obi and other candidates, like we are made to understand, two other part political parties have appeared before. So for me, uh, Peter B is not unknown for creating history in our Nigerian judiciary. He is rather known for that. You know the way he came into Anambra after the 2003 election in Anambra? He came after the election in 2007. People did not believe it was possible for anything for the judiciary to look at the facts. So, but the judiciary did look at the facts and he was not only declared a winner, he also went back to the same court to interpret his tenure as governor. And he set the precedence of what to call staggered election in Nigeria. So, if that kind of uh, 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 order or precedence can be set at the state level, the national uh, 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 judiciary shouldn't look at what they normally say. They will say, oh, you consider national security, you consider... We have put in over 350 billion naira to regularize the electoral process by including uh, the use of beavers and other technologies in this election. So you asked for 350 billion naira, and 350 billion naira was approved, given to you to the least couple. And you came up with a shambolic result and exercise that is now tearing the nation apart, tearing states apart, tearing... Look, if the process was fair, free and credible, Mr. Wangu, by now, Nigeria should have been congrat Nigeria should have been congratulating the winner. Not only that, Nigeria should have been hopeful that this nation has been set on the path of a positive trajectory for electoral reforms. Nigerians who are tearing their international passports, as you've seen, burning their uh, uh, permanent voters card. I just finished a call before I joined this program. It was a long call, me trying to convince a young lady who is saying, look, I, if I don't succeed in burning my PVC, which may be extreme, it, will, it is just for identification purposes. If you, if you sample the opinion of 100 Nigerian youths, over 85% stand on the same ground. So is it about you being declared? Is it about you saying you've won the election? Have you won the confidence of the people? There are components that goes with this election, uh, the elections, as it were. The first component is winning the confidence that is what is called the moral authority to govern. If it is lacking in a democracy, uh, people will feel you are not legitimately qualified to rule over them. And that is going to cascade to all the decisions and policy actions you will take, as it were, even in the course of governance. So that is why it is a difficult moment for the nation. It is a tempting moment for, the, for Nigeria, as it were. But it's also a time for the judiciary to stand this ground, to say, look, we, must have been, we may have been getting it wrong in all of this for now. We, have, we may have been telling people, look, this card reader is not captured in the Electoral Act. Now is the time that we have an Electoral Act 
signed assented to, which included transmission, electronic transmission of results. No matter how they paint it, Mr. Wangul, 80% of the new voters who came into the election on the 25th of February to vote for the first time in history, as we were made to, you know, as samples of opinions proved, did so because of the trust and the confidence that they had in the INEC that the electoral process has been strengthened to the point that if you vote, you don't need to bother yourself with manual collation. You don't need to bother yourself about that. At the point you voted, it is, we, we campaigned to, we followed politicians to cover their campaigns across the states, across the 36 states and the FCT. We also know what the, what builds the confidence of the people around the electoral process. It was nothing more than the fact that people believe that once you cast your ballot at the polling booth, it is going to be transmitted immediately and directly electronically to the central server in INEC. Mr. Wangu, we saw that work in Ekiti. We approved, we applauded it. We saw it work in Anambra against heavy money back. We approved and applauded it. We also saw that work perfectly in Oshu State. We approved and applauded it. And then people began to say, oh, it's like this INEC has eventually got it right. So let us use this national election to prove that we are not uh, we are we are not uh, docile. We are not just docile youths who don't understand, uh, uh, who, who who always cry and then want to take the Japa, uh, Japa syndrome and then look for what is better outside. We want to be participants in the process, and this energizes the young people to move out in their numbers to get their privileges. As we speak, if you check the number of new entrants who voted on the twenty fifth, who couldn't even come back to vote on the March eighteenth. You will know that the, 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 the electoral process is losing its value, its test, its credibility already. So the best thing for the judiciary to do is to look at the law, not at what it always will say. Consideration for national security, consideration for this and that. You will have what security crisis, predictably, if you allow the law to be misinterpreted because of the fear of the consequences. The judiciary should be made bold decision. If we've wasted 350 billion naira unaccounted for in the last election, I mean, the nation should be able to say, okay, even if it is for the purposes of the beavers is already there, uh, getting the ballot, getting things ready to go back to the post, let the people's confidence and will triumph. That is all that Nigeria requires. And all these agitations, all this noise you hear all over the place, all this lack of confidence and trust, mistrust in governance. We will we, be a thing of the past, and Nigeria can begin a rebuilding process from there. So the onus is on the judiciary, the ball is on this court, okay. and it is better, it determines what is before it, okay. judiciously and expeditiously, without any form of bias. We're looking at the last elections and what impact it will have in future elections and what the people feel about it. We've just heard that... Uh, or we know that the Labour Party and some other parties have gone to court to uh, try to interpret some of the things that need interpretation and to challenge some of the things that happened within uh, during the election. Uh, one of such things is that uh, the Labour Party is asking for the nullifications of the entire process or at least the removal of the president-elect because he did not win legally. That's what they're arguing. And so many other things surrounding the elections. And we still have Tunji Abdul Hamid here in the house with us he's a legal practitioner and Charles O2 is a political analyst we'll come to you now uh, Tunji uh, to start to talk about uh, some of the few things that we have thrown up in the course of this discussion first of all uh, we talked or uh, Charles uh, talked about uh, beavers and how it raised the confidence level of the people leading up to the election of the 25th of February and uh, that of the governorship and state house of assembly but in these beavers, I'm asking you as a legal practitioner now, uh, in these beavers, in this uh, electoral act, which included beavers, because he kept saying that in the other election circles, the argument was that whatever technology was introduced into the election was not captured in the electoral act. Now, beavers was captured and people, the level of confidence rose so high and a lot of people went to get their PVCs and they wanted to vote and they actually went to the field to vote. But the other argument, even before it goes to court or before it went to court, is that Beavers, even though it was captured in the Electoral Act, also had a little uh, place 
that gave INEC the power to choose how to transmit these results, not necessarily uh, through the BVAS. Uh, now, if you have read through the Electoral Act, um, help us to understand how, on the one hand, this same law will say that this is a must, transmitting the result through the BVAS, and then, on the other hand, it will say uh, you have the power to, to choose how to transmit the results uh, to the INEC portal or whatever you want to use to gather the results before the announcements. Now, what will come before the other? How, how, how are we to understand when we are arguing what we should be saying that this is what the law holds and we stand by it? Because that same law was speaking through two sides of the mouth, as it were. So help us to understand that, please, Tunji. I, I think uh, the law is not speaking with, uh, with two types sides of its mouth. I, I've always been told, I'm one of those who, who believe that, look, our law is not the problem. It's the people who are meant to implement the law that are the problem. So uh, the law, no, when the, when the letter of 2022 was made, I was one of those who raised that issue. That at that time, you know, most of us in Nigeria, we just flow with the events. And, and we just, it has been signed, at least, it has been signed, let's just fight first, this and that. You know, I raised that issue at that time. They want to ensure that INEC gets its independence. And in that electoral act, so many of the provisions allow INEC to determine mode of doing certain things. It gives them that discretion. So it is that discretion they are now misusing now. Because the, the INEC has discretion to determine how the result will be transmitted. There is, there's, no, there's nothing in the law which compare them to do it electronically. They have, it's, it's a, as, as determined by the commission. So which means it's a, it's a, it's a discretion. But the point is, is that where the electoral act, you know, when we talk about election, as far as I'm concerned, the three basic uh, legal framework for election in Nigeria are uh, constitution, the electoral act, and the, 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 the INEC uh, manual or, or what they call regulation. So, if you, and, and as far as I'm concerned, so those three uh, legal framework must be abide by uh, which the INEC must, must go in line with those uh, law. The, the electoral act, yes, the electoral act gave them the discretion to determine how to transmit uh, results. But the, the, the INEC on its own, before the election, came out with regulation, particularly regulation 38, whereby they said all results will be transmitted to IRF. And that, that was the procedure. So the INEC is bound by that regulation. The people who want to be mischievous, or they will say regulation is not part of our law. The Supreme Court has said it, that regulation is part of the law. Because that regulation was made first one to the provision of the Constitution and the Electoral Act. Because the Electoral Act and the Constitution gave INEC the power to determine how election is to be conducted, including all those uh, the processes, in, including making regulations. They gave them that power. The electoral acts, the constitution, gave INEC the power to make regulation, which means that regulation is what is called subsidiary legislation. No. So in law, yes. we have what we call primary legislation and secondary legislation. Second, primary legislation is at, 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 at this stage is the electoral acts and the constitution. The secondary legislation at this point is the regulation. And as far as I'm concerned, it's the law which INEC must, must, must be abided by. But when INEC wants to, because my position at that time, when the law was passed, was that this is an opportunity for INEC to do what they want to do. That was what I raised at that time, that this, uh, uh, this discretion has to determine by. Why can't we make it so straight that must be by, they say, it will hinder their, their operation in case there's a failure of technology. So I said, okay, well, but I said, look, that, that, that discretion is an avenue for anyone who wants to do, uh, what, what I don't know, the, I'm, 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 uh, Mago Mago, he, he wants to do a joro, you know what that kind of thing. He wants to maneuver or manipulate. That's an opportunity for them to, uh, that's what we're, we're seeing now today. You can see, I, I don't know, I'm not a, an, an IT person, but I don't know why a server that is meant to receive three results, presidential election, the electoral election, and the, what's it called? And the out of prep elections. Will be able to, is able to receive the snakes, is able to receive the House of Rep, but is unable to receive the presidential election results. How? Was it programmed in that manner? Because if it's not programmed in that manner, it that means it will accept presidential, it will accept Senate, it will reject Senate, it will reject presidential, but it's not rejecting any of the Senate and Rep. But it's, re it's rejecting that of a presidential. It's, as far as I'm concerned, it's, it was deliberate. As far as I'm concerned, it's a manuf manufacturing. So I will not blame any law. It's not, the law. it's not about the law. It's about the people who are meant to implement the law. They implement the law in a way that will pay for their own personal interests. It's, it's, the election was not, uh, uh, you know, in this way that will not make the election to be transparent because they, they are aware 
that if that result is being transmitted to Ireland, that means people will be able to follow and they won't be able to do any manipulation again. That was what happened in the Soviet when people have that confidence that our, we are now moving to where we expect uh, that uh, we, are, we, we are to be. And that was why so many people have interest in participation. In participation. I'll tell you, the, the last uh, the Saturday election, the, the, the number of people who came out for the votes is a, is, a, is, a, is a confirmation that people are not satisfied. See, they, they now refer back to their old uh, thinking that our, 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 our votes don't count. That was right. That, 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 that's, that's a confirmation as far as I'm concerned. Look at Liberty State that used to come out with uh, 2 million votes. The total vote in the university is now up to 500,000, if I'm correct. Total vote from the university in, that, in this governorship election is now up to 500 votes or a bit of, above 500. So as far as I'm concerned, this election has, has drawn us back to so many years. In other words, we are back to 80s. Not, we, have, we have gained a lot when the electoral came up. And the two elections that have been held, at that time we said that we have appreciative uh, uh, improvement. But that improvement, everything has gone. People don't, no longer have confidence in it. I don't ask. If you have, you will show. I don't have confidence in it. You can see what happened in Kaduna yesterday. The 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 the, 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 the uh, what's it called? The the officer that was to declare results made all effort to ensure that look, the candidate wants to declare who will declare. They directed him to all areas of law. The law, even if you are there's a conflict, that's a that's an issue race. The law gave the INE section section fifty two and fifty one. So they gave the INE the power to review the all the issue race. What they do? He said no. To want to declare, but how can you? A, a, a candidate was leading now went to a particular guy and remove all his votes so that he will not be able to to go back to behind. You know, see all these things you can see in all almost all the all these all the states. We have so many. I, I tell you, I will not see any state that will not be any uh, case uh, against this election. So many all, all the cases will be challenged in court, but majority of them, net, at least 90 percent or 80 percent will be challenged in court. But there is no transparency, there is no accountability. The, the people did not see it as free and fair. He was made, he was, he was, he was characterized by violence, thuggery, intimidation. You can see what happened in Lagos State. Clearly, some people who even came up openly to tell some people don't come and vote if you are not voting for a particular candidate. Is that, is that, is that a democracy? Democracy is by choice. You have the right to come and vote. I, I, I'm one of those who believe that with all that, without that intimidation in Lagos State, Governor Saolu will still win that election. He will still win that election because the 25th election, it's different from this election. That 25th election, it was able, it was a bit of this influence. Not the candidates in Lagos State. No, not the people in Lagos State. You know, that would be, and the people was not in this election, and they would have won. But because of the fear, people, some people resorted into intimidation, attack, and violence. Which is, which is what we see in the report that we got in so many other, other so many states. At the same, violence, threats, intimidation. And that's what we see. So I, as far as I'm concerned, this, uh, this this particular election that was conducted by this INE, I, I think I am I am I am I am embarrassed. I am I am I am, I am disappointed. I, I, in fact, I am feeling I I am I'm, I'm feeling that we have wasted all our money because we spent yes. a lot of money to bring this. And you are told, be us, Ireland is a game changer. That's what we are hearing. Game changer. Now it's, it's game 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 otherwise. But I'm not seeing the change. They have not changed anything. They the they, 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 they didn't put abandon it. And you know, another thing, another point is that even before that election, people raised that concern that I need the ones to decision Rivers and IRF. And they come out and say, no, we will never do that. We will never do that. What, are, what, what, what they do at the end of the day, they decision it and they use it where they feel comfortable. Where they are not comfortable, they decision it, they say it's not possible. And what I know from the electoral arts, from my own knowledge, is that where the electoral, where paper is not used to accredit, that election cannot hold. And that's a result in that, in that, in that, in those areas. Cannot hold. They are this whole year upholding it. They are upholding it. And they have the power to, 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 to reject or cancel any election that was not a, a, a that did not pass through the BFAS procedure. They, 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 what, by that new law, manual accreditation is no longer available. They were still doing that. Okay. Uh, we did right. that, they did that in this last election. <laughs> so, right. unfortunately, so <laughs> what I'm saying is that what, the INF failed to comply all with right. all laid down laws, you know, that the regulations. The electoral act, the constitution, they, they decide to petition all that and do the, ele the, the, the okay. election in okay. their Tunji. own way, the way they like it, all right, where Tunji. they have the interest. To in calm down, drink some water. <laughs> <All right. laughs> Thank you. Um, <clears throat> let me let me come to you, Charles. Let me come to you, Charles. Uh, a lot of people Thank are paid. You. We we understand that, but you know. What has been done has been done, but we still have a future ahead of us. And there are a lot of things that we can still change. 
Now, the fear is that the judiciary may not have uh, the capacity or the will to do what is right. Because we've seen instances of uh, things that have happened that we did not understand. There was a lot of abracadabra inside it. We have a governor in Imo State. We still don't understand what happened there uh, before he became a governor. We have a Senate president who returned to the Senate. We don't understand which part of the Electoral Act gave him the pass to return and contest and even win. And we also have a, uh, someone, a former governor in uh, Akwaibom State that came back and and contested and won, and he's now a senator-elect, and we do, still do not understand. Maybe their cases were credible enough, and they, they, had, they won the cases, and they went back there, but we just don't understand what happened. Now, the thing is, if we have lost some level of confidence in the judiciary, what can we do to make sure that this judiciary, that if we leave things to them, may do what we think is not good enough, what can we do to make sure we keep them on their toes? How can we get involved in this process, in this legal process, as peacefully as possible, but as exerting as possible, as, as not intimidating as possible, but uh, to make them know that we are watching and watching really good? What can we do as a people? Uh, thank you very much, uh, Mr. Wambu. First of all, I must commend uh, uh, Barrister Tunji there. Uh, he spoke passionately, and uh, he spoke uh, the minds of many Nigerians, even as a lawyer, because uh, some people are shifting grounds, you know, on ethnic convenience and all of that. Uh, I'm, I'm proud of him, and I'm proud he, he and some others are standing by the fact that the law should not be toyed with. Now, uh, but, uh, to your question, uh, uh, Tunji, before I answer your question, Tunji mentioned the uh, Kaduna State. Yes, those ones are before the media. In a boy state where I come from, where I monitor the election, a sitting governor walked into the INEC office at my own local government, that people not local government area, in the dead of the night. And all he could do was simple. He said, look. He, he said, look. Um, go ahead, go ahead, we can hear you. Okay, he said, uh, we, we, we saw, when we saw what happened, what was playing out, we said, look, what should uh, uh, a, a governor ordinarily be doing in this uh, kind of environment? They came, they switched off all the lights. So uh, the INEC woman was shouting, saying, local government chairman, this is not how collation is done. Stop, you put you stop. Collations that were supposed to be done at the what collation level was brought to the point of a uh, collision at the local government level and they chased away every other party's agents they chased away everybody that was not a member of the party of uh, the uh, ruling apc and then and then they manipulated all the figures in some places like in pulling in 003 i can't even figure out for technical one 003 pulling in 003 i can't even figure out for technique the number of uh, uh, voters captured in Beavers was about 185. The number of votes declared for the APC in that area through manual collation was 590. Hmm. These are these are these in are the days, days of Beavers. But that is, the Beavers was utterly bypassed in most parts of, uh, in fact, not, uh, more than 60 70 percent of the pulling units uh, uh, at the collation point. So you now look at a place, you say your opponent is leading you here, you now do some substantial statistics, some in most cases overriding and getting across over, much over the, the number of, much more than the number of registered voters in that particular unit, polling unit. And this was what happened across the 171 electoral wards, across the 2,495 polling units in Ebony State. And today somebody is declared the winner, somebody is claiming victory, and the people are watching. You see, like one good, they have said it all in uh, the various social media uh, place, uh, uh, platforms where they say, look, the African proverb is simple. You can steal the community drum successfully. The problem is where to beat it. You beat it in your house, the neighbor hears the drum and say, oh, that is the drum he stole from uh, 
our, uh, our, our, our playground. You beat it in the public, they say, it's still that's our same drum. That is what is happening to those who have stolen. It's, a, it's a cross body, it's all over the state, and it's a shame. I'm ashamed that in an era where we thought things would be done rightly, because it is no longer the era. You know, if it was in 2003, there was no technology. The high score election would have gone unnoticed. But you saw the videos. You saw people saying they were intimidated. Intimidated. Vote buying was ongoing in almost all the places. Now, the issues that are germane before the court is not only to determine whether these cases before it can stand or not. The main issue before the court or the uh, courts in Nigeria is whether they would want to set a precedence that this electoral malfeasance will no longer stand as it were. That when somebody tells you, go to court, if you like, like it's now being rumored, some people come to social media to make jest of go to court. They say, they collect your wife, they say, go, can go to court and challenge it. Now, the judiciary has become a mockery of its highly revered and esteemed image. And it should use this period. That's it should use these petitions before it in the next 180 days before July, August, to cleanse the urgent table. Let let us not say, oh, oh, we've wasted money. If we cancel elections, it's going to cost us more money. No, let it cost us and let us get the right people and let, let us get the masses will to prevail. Look at the few cases in the south. It's like Enugu and Dabia, for instance, where it was glaring. That Labour Party candidates were leading. Look at how they are toy, toying with the results, uh, uh, Mr. Wangu. My brother Tunji, there will be. See, be, 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 because of what? They are still trying to tell the people that they can go to court because they don't want uh, the, 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 the youths who pour their energy into, their, into this election to have even what they call a low hanging fruit. Because that lowest hanging fruit will be that, okay, we can begin a rebuilding of the confidence of the process with these two states, with these individuals. In a point, for instance, you cannot count a, a local government that the governor of the state did not physically, physically visit within a point south, at least. Or practically the five local governments in the dead of the night, moving from one location to the other, track policemen and soldiers on uniform were chasing people away, real soldiers and police, who escorted ballot materials and INEC officials, including youth corps members, to the local government headquarters. Chased them out of Africa, not local government, at 9.30 p.m. on Saturday. Shooting sporadically, a, the woman was the ego was locked inside the room. So much to talk about, so much, just so much. And this is the haze some people want to believe. Uh, people who were elected through that means and manner should be congratulated. Come on, the word His Excellency should be excellent indeed, please. And the judiciary shouldn't make a further mockery of his because all of this are happening and they are telling you to go to God because they just believe they can buy over the judges. So if I were a judge, I would ask myself, if my aunt, my cousin, my relative, my father, my mother is a judge, I would ask myself the simple question. What does the law, mommy or daddy, what does the law specify? Can we now begin to retrieve this system, make this system strengthened, so people will know that there will be consequences for their actions? In, in, uh, in one of the northern states, I think it's in Bauchi State or so, you watched a police, uh, two policemen Helping to induce voters and intimidate voters, <laughs> helping a politician, it was an eyesore. I, I, I wept okay. and I wept bitterly for okay. all that happened across the sisters of the federation. It was like right. it, we went back. Uh, Tunji would have, was saying we went back to the we went back to the primitive age, <laughs> the primitive right. age of 1953. Right, that is what we went back to. Because right, you cannot, you did not see anywhere. In previous elections that have held at least up to four, five, six elections in this country, where people were even threatened not to come out and cast their ballots. So what has happened is exactly what my friend Tunji has summed up. People okay. have recoiled to their shell to say, look, we have lost confidence in the system, we've lost confidence in Nigeria, and okay. it is all we are all going to suffer for it. The okay. generations unborn, thank including you. the ones to come, are going to suffer for it. Thank so you. For Th me, thank the you, judiciary John. must assert its authority using yeah. this matter. That's my final submission. Yeah, thank, thank you okay. very much. Unfortunately, unfortunately, uh, just a, mo just a moment, Tunji. I, I, I'd just like you guys to wrap up, uh, giving us final words, because no matter how 
disheartening this might be, some of us don't have another passport. We have only Nigeria and we would, would still keep hoping. So let's take a final word to Nigerians so that we don't end on a, a, this kind of note like there is no hope. There is still hope. So talk to Nigerians, both of you. Let me start with you, Tunji, as, as briefly as possible. Keep hoping at all. Let's forget the past. Is what has been taken. Is what brought us to where we are today. Let's call a spade a spade. But when the wrong thing is done, let's, let's correct it. I, I know when I, I, it's gone. Let's face and that. Let's start for the next elections. You, you will see people call people who have called people names now. You see them calling for for the consolation. You will see them calling them for saying let's let let that, that, that be truth. That was just politics. You see, we. Democracy is not is about is, you can't force yourself to serve people. Mm. They, they, you are coming to government to serve, and you are forcing yourself. What do you want to achieve? Unfortunately, our elect, our elect, our law did not give any body to the ILEC when it comes to court. The body on, is on the petitioner, and unfortunately, again, the the weapon that will be used against in that election is again is you have to get it from the ILEC who you are fighting. Mm. You can see the unfortunate aspect of our of our system, and that's why you will not blame the judiciary most time. The yeah. system is, is, is not is not is not the way it should be. That's right. You want to fight INEC, you are still collecting weapons from the INEC. Mm. You, you can see what you can see what they did when when uh, PDP and uh, Labour Party asked for uh, uh, inspection of the material. You can see the way they frustrated them, and they were they were not able to check. How do you prove your case? And the body is on their head. It's not on the head of the INEC. That's unfortunate aspect of it. So the, I think uh, we should we need to change our law All to right. ensure that to say that look, when you are INEC must establish that he conducted. A free and fair election and that transparent. Okay. People should not like us, like you said. We should all continue to participate. Mm. We should see the country as our own. Governance is part is everybody's everybody business. It's not for politicians alone. It's it's for all of us, and we must see it in that way. Right. Until we all put ourselves our head into it or and our eyes into it, all we right. can't see any change. And if we continue Thank to behave this way, I tell you there won't be any any good results. Thank you. Thank you very much, Charles. From you, uh, thirty seconds, if you may. Uh, let's just wrap it uh, okay. up with you. Uh, I just I end with this quote. Uh, Bernie Sanders of the United States of America made this quote. He said, what politics is about is whether we protect the needs of millions of people in this country who are hurting. I believe Bernie was talking to Nigerians directly. Uh, Joe Biden, supporting that uh, quote again, said, if you do politics the right way, I believe you can actually make people's lives better. And integrity, I repeat, integrity is the minimum ante to get into the game. Where is the moral conscience of the people who perpetrated this act? And that's why I join my words with uh, what Tunji has said. We shouldn't sweep what has happened and just say, oh, let bygone be bygone. They are politics. No. Okay. These are criminal offenses that has been prescribed. Okay. Port buying is a criminal offense that has been prescribed, prescribed in the Electoral Act, signed into law. It should come into effect. So the judiciary should not allow anyone intimidate it to it, into taking it very casually that, look, uh, uh, um, uh, we are looking at the national interest of national security, and therefore we cannot do justice or what is right and fair before us. So it shouldn't be that way. Okay. So I also encourage Nigerian youth to, not to lose hope in the system. All right. Uh, personally, I lost hope after Saturday, but... I have begun to rebuild my own confidence back because um, That's good. we don't have any other country we'll call our own. So we believe that one day we will we'll get things right. But before then, it is the strengthening of the institutions with the judiciary is There's at one. the fulcrum that can help us strengthen those institutions. Thank you very Thank much. Thank you. Thank you very much, gentlemen. Tunji Abdul Hamid, legal practitioner, and Charles Otu, a political analyst. Thank you, gentlemen, for coming on the program today. Thank, thank you for having me. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. We we'll put the right people inside in the system. We will, we will get it right. We will get it right. Okay, like we've Let's said, right <laughs> like we've said, everybody get involved, and being involved is get interested in what is happening. There is there are litigations, there are protests here and there, there are petitions here and there. Uh, just stay on the legal lane and make sure that you see everything that is going on. Just cultivate that interest so that everybody will know that we are watching. It is our Nigeria, and we want it to be peaceful, we want it to be safe, and we want it to prosper. My name is Nyamgul Agaji. From the entire family of Plus Politics and uh, the ballot, I say good night, and let's do it again tomorrow. Bye for now.